The whole world said, Japan, you're done. But they have found this magic word. What's this magic word that all these people knew? So this was Japan and Germany after the Second World War, right? Total devastation. People never thought Japan is going to come out of that. They were destroyed, flat. The whole world said, Japan, you're done. Other than who? The Japanese. <laughs> the Japanese found this magic word, which I'm sure you have experienced. I'm sure some of you know it as well. And the Japanese said, no, we are going to come out. So at that time was the birth of Toyota, Honda, all of these companies from nothing. Japan, no natural resources, only fish, right? <laughs> no steel, but biggest manufacturer of automobiles. So there's a magic word that all these people actually knew. Stephen Hawkins, one of the most brilliant minds ever, suddenly gets diagnosed, you're going to lose all function of your muscles. You are going to be paralyzed. Imagine if that happens to one of us. Stephen Hawkins now finds this magic word. But Beethoven, one of the, the greatest composers the world has ever seen, suddenly starts going deaf. Imagine if you're a musician and you're going deaf. He finds the magic word. Mahesh Amalin and Ashraf Omar, the founders of Brandix and MS, right through their careers there has been change. There has been disruption. There has been points where there is no, no people to recruit. There have been points when there is no transport. There have been points when nobody, there are no customers. At the moment, exports are down, right, for the garment industry. But they have found this magic word. They have expanded into so many countries. They have gone beyond garments, into technology, into garment tech. They all knew this magic word. Richard Branson, at the age of six or eight, he's diagnosed with dys dyslexia. Of course, he had dyslexia, nobody knew that he had dyslexia. His teacher said, you're too stupid to do anything. Go away. He finds the magic word. He becomes one of the biggest entrepreneurs the world has ever seen. Oprah Winfrey, sexually abused as a teenager, 14, 15 years old. Finds the magic word, goes on to become one of the most recognized women in the world, one of the most powerful, one of the richest, really. Dilma, Meryl J. Fernando, found the magic word. So we are selling tea as a commodity. You can't make a lot of margins and tea is a commodity. He decides, OK, let me, let me do something different. Let me brand it. Let me do this. Let me do that. And now Dilma is known around the world. Magic word. Arjuna Rantunga, Murali is getting called for all everything, right? Every, every ball he bowls, no ball, no ball, no ball. The team is down. Arjuna finds the magic word, takes the team, wins the World Cup. Nelson Mandela, imagine. In jail for 27 years, in a small room, you can only see one tree from the window. <laughs> he, can, he only sees one human being once a year for 30 minutes at a time. That's it. 27 years. Finds the magic word. <laughs> when he's released, he comes out and says, I'm going to get together with the people who put me in jail and build this country. What's this magic word? <laughs> What's this magic word that all these people knew? It's choice. It's Choice. Nelson Mandela in jail for 27 years makes the choice to come out and say, I will not take revenge against the people who put me in jail, but I will get together with them and build this country. Choice. Just take the fact that everything we do is our choice. Everything we do is our choice. I came up with this model, the CCC model, I call it. So the first C is there is always going to be change. There is always going to be change. Yes, certainty. When change happens, we have a choice. When change happens, I have a choice, right? What do I do? Some people say, no, change happens. I have no choice. How many of you have been there? Anyone who has ever said, I don't have a choice? So there was this lady. I was doing a program for Nations Trust Bank, and I was talking about choice. And in the break, this lady came and spoke to me and said, Sanjeev, you're wrong. Because in my life, I didn't have a choice. So I said, tell me, what happened? You know, now I'm 30 years old. I have been working at the bank now for more than 10 years. I didn't join the bank by my choice. My parents told me, join the bank. Now I've been here for 10 plus years. I have done my banking exams. I have passed my exams. I've got promoted. I'm a manager now. But not by my choice. I had no choice. Did you have a choice or no choice? She had a choice. What was the choice? Listening to the parents or not? 
That's also a choice. So even if I say no choice, that's also a choice. The choice to say no choice is also a choice. That is also a choice. See, look at these two babies. <laughs> so when change happens, we have a choice to either be a victim of circumstances, what can I do, or to be a creator of circumstances. Okay, let me take this change. Let me make something great out of this. Let me make something positive out of this. So when COVID stuck, I was first a victim of circumstances. What can I do? And then as soon as I stopped digging myself deeper into the hole, stopped digging, came out, saw opportunity, I became a creator of circumstances. And for two years, I worked from one chair at home. <laughs> and that chair shows the markings of me having worked in it for two years. Victim of circumstances or creator of circumstances? What would you rather be? Who would like to be a victim of circumstances? What can I do? Who would like to be a creator of circumstances?